money stack. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Beat Stop. Today I wanted to talk about festival postponements. Now at this point in the year, just about every major festival is postponed to a later point in the year or all the way into 2021. And as an event planner myself, every time they announce that Coachella or EDC or whatever festival has been pushed to a later date, I always think about the logistics and the details that go into something that seems as simple as announcing a new date for this event. So today I wanted to talk about what does it logistically take to postpone a festival? And before I get started, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for future BeatStop videos. Now, disclaimer, obviously I have never postponed a major festival myself. I do work in the event and festival industry, so this is meant to be a simplified layman's list of what it would take to announce a new date for a major festival. And one more note, while most festivals are owned by larger companies like Live Nation or AEG, for the sake of this video, we'll assume that each festival operates logistically and financially on its own. So I broke up this video into three categories in order of priority that I think a promoter would need to iron out before officially announcing a postponement. So that first section is venue and date availability making sure there's a where and a when. Festivals are like little towns. There's structures and bathrooms and internet and tons of people just to build it up and operate it. So a promoter would need to reserve a venue, not just for the three or four days that the event is taking place, but for a week, sometimes two weeks before the festival to build everything and then some amount of time after to take it all down. So really you're looking at about a whole month that a venue needs to be available for this new date. The venue needs to have no conflicts or overlap with other events, including other events' build times and teardown times just to be viable. For something in a major city like EDC Las Vegas, Particular discussions need to be had to ensure hotel availability and other travel and tourism accommodations for the mass influx of people. This consideration is twofold. So will the attendees have a place to stay? Will they have a means of travel in and out of the city? And it's also a consideration for the local community. So how much will this community be impacted by traffic? Are there other events going on at this time? Maybe not at this particular venue, but in a near enough vicinity where the community might still be impacted by an influx of people. And then as far as that new date goes, weather is a huge factor to consider. You wouldn't see a snow globe postponed to June the same way you wouldn't see Coachella postponed to January because it just doesn't make sense for the brand. Because most of these events take place largely outdoors, the weather around the time that it has taken place historically becomes tied to that brand. This further narrows down the possible dates that a promoter can consider when postponing an event. The second category is ticketing and budgeting. So the big question is will you offer refunds if so an event budget for the new date wouldn't be settled until those refunds have been ironed out there needs to be a plan a timeline and a mechanism to redistribute those refunds back which would require pretty high levels of collaboration with the ticketing vendor who handled those transactions depending on where a festival is in the planning process it's very possible that a promoter had already spent that money on deposits for the venue, for equipment, and a multitude of other things. So that would further complicate things. On the other hand, if you're not offering refunds, you know exactly what you're working with, albeit to the dismay of the attendees. So this is a real tarnish to your brand and you do lose trust in the people that gave you hundreds of dollars for experience. And on top of that, it makes things messy legally depending on the terms of each ticket purchase, as we're seeing with Ultra Miami, who is currently involved with a class action lawsuit for not refunding tickets for their 2020 event. So depending on the specific event and the details of each postponement, this last category will play out differently and that is the availability of infrastructure and key vendors. There's a finite amount of stages, audiovisual equipment, technicians and companies that know how to build operate and take down the stages that comprise a music festival. You'd be surprised how much overlap there is between companies that are doing these major festivals that you've heard of. So there needs to be no major conflicts for stages and stage managers and technical directors that are key to running a show. And again, we're not talking about just a conflict on the day of the show. We're talking about a week or so leading up to it and then a week or so after it to allow for time to build, 
and take it down after the event. Music festivals are very, very complex logistically and financially. And add to that the additional layer of most of these events being owned by a bigger person that operates multiple festivals. And there you have a very intricate and challenging process to simply move a festival from one date to another date six months later. So that is a quick, simplified rundown on what it would take to postpone a festival logistically. Let me know if you found this information helpful or interesting. I'm planning on leaning in a little bit more into my event expertise for some of the future videos since the festival industry is so dynamic right now. And I, I think it's really interesting if you all care to hear about it. <laughs> Once again, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications for future BSOP videos. My name is Ace Antonio and I will see you next time. Don't be